I got a new bike. Trek Slash 2021 top alloy model, so the Slash 8. Love this paint job. Straight out of the gate. This is on the on the computer and on the photos. It wasn't doing it for me, but I wanted the bike for the performance and the geometry. So thought, you know, I can the paint will probably grow on me. As soon as I got it, it is just gorgeous. It's the best finish I've seen on a bike. It's the best finish. It's so nice. The welds, the way that they've kind of tidied up the welds to make the make everything look good. It's just killer. Now, why did I go for a slash A? Obviously, alloy over carbon. No brainer. Hanging to get back on a Lyric. Absolutely hanging to get back on a Lyric. I love a Super Deluxe, obviously. But... I'm also looking for a bike that's compatible with the coil. Now this bike is absolutely coil ready. We got 64.1 degree head angle, 75.6 degree seat tube angle, so steeper than the old slash. Uh, still not quite as steep as I'm used to. I've got a 77 on my patrol, which just this perfect climbing position. This I've had to slide the seat all the way forward, so you're right on that max. Uh, to get it. I've only ridden it once. I went up, did a lap and a half at Moriata yesterday just to break it in and see kind of ballpark, see where everything is. Uh, and climbing with the seat kind of backed off a little bit, it was, you, you're kind of pushing into the cranks a bit. So it's still a little bit slacker than you would like, but it's definitely acceptable. With the seat slid all the way forward, it feels almost the same as a patrol. So it's cool, it's good enough. It's only a 150 dropper, but I'll put a 180 on there. Eventually, I'll let this simmer, and if this is in, if this is a good, reliable dropper, I'll run it for a little while, and then maybe pull it out and sell it. But if it's starting to show signs of durability issues, I'll leave it on until it is. Uh, it shows enough wear to to warrant a return and a warranty, and maybe pay a little bit extra for an upgraded length. So go go a one seventy or one eighty Bontrager dropper. Keep keep with the theme. Uh, Back to geometry, chainstay, 437mm chainstay, so a little bit longer than the patrol again. The patrol's a 430. I like a 440 chainstay, no longer. 435 to 440 is perfect for this length of a bike, so 469 reach, 1243 wheelbase, so much, much bigger bike than I'm used to, 1209 I'm coming from. But all the bikes I've been testing, the amount of time that I've spent on bikes, I've found that regardless of wheel size, they say, you know, on a 2090 you don't really want as much reach and as much this and... I don't think so. I think uh, your size is your size. How you like to ride. Uh, you know, some people would prefer a smaller bike, some people would prefer a bigger bike. It's, it's, it's purely personal preference. I've found that the longer bike feels more stable when I'm jumping, carries more speed, and just feels better in the corners. The longer bike feels better for me in the corners. So I'm a 1243 wheelbase now, and I really like it. Riding it around the streets and getting out for that one ride, doesn't feel big at all, it feels perfect. If anything, the patrol feels small, and medium bikes feel small. So this is an ML, medium large. Uh, quick spec, 820 bars, comes with 820 bars, so I've cut them down straight away, cut them down to 750, plus my grip, so I'm at 760 uh, functional width. Took the Bontrager grips off because they've got metal on the outside and inside, so they, they, they clamp on the outer side and the inner side. Now, I don't like the idea of a metal clamp on the outside because when I clip a tree, which is inevitable, you always, you know, one in every 150 or 200 rides, you clip a tree enough to, if you've got metal there, you'll burst your, you'll burst your finger open. I've done it multiple times. I've got scars on that finger and I've got scars on that finger where I've burst them open where it's been tree or, or rock or something on the side of the trail versus the metal and my finger is just, you know, between, literally between a rock and a hard place. So rubber on the end of the grip, much better. So these are the ODI Elite Flow. Good. Aftermarket, obviously. Now, tyres. It comes with this XR5 2.6 on the front, which kind of feels a little... It's got a bit of weight to it. Got a little bit of weight to it. But the sidewalls are absolutely just... Eh, it's like an EXO, almost... They almost feel weak, or they do feel weaker than an EXO. Like they just... Yeah, they feel a little bit weak. No, probably similar to an EXO. Probably similar to an EXO. 
but bouncing around on the street and cutting and, and whatever, it feels a little bit slippery. It, when you push it, it feels kind of like it's got a bit of grip, but it's nothing like the, the DHF Max grip. The rear tyre, the Bontrager XR4, is definitely thinner and more flexy than the XR5. Doesn't feel any faster. I rode this on the street before I changed the tyres over, thinking maybe I'll give them a test on the track, but no way. After riding them on the street, just you gotta put too much pressure on them for those sidewalls to feel strong, and even then, slamming into gutters, they're just weak. They are a w very, very weak tyre, and I've got no idea why they spec them on a bike like this. If you're trying to sell your tyres, if you're trying to wrap, you know, give your tyres a good wrap, these may be on the fuel, maybe on the you put them maybe on the fuel, but definitely not on the slash. Not on the slash or not on the remedy. They're just weak. You, I wouldn't have even got one run. And you guys know I'm safety first when it comes to riding. So I wasn't going to test it with those tyres on. I didn't want to risk anything. And, and I know, you know, oh, you should test it exactly how it comes. But the majority of bikes I test, I put a DHF on the front. Or they've got a DHF on the front. And I put a strong enough tyre on the back. So doing the same thing with this. Go with what I know. So I've got a max grip up front, aggressor, double down at the back. It's got a wobble, standard aggressor. Uh, brakes, code R, so simple, no real adjustment there, just a lever pull adjustment. 200 rotor at the front, 180 rotor at the back. <laughs> I've watched a few of them, I've watched pretty much every review available on these bikes, and they're all, they kind of all jump on the same bandwagon. I don't know why. But they all jump on the same bandwagon with the. Oh, it's got a 30 tooth on it. Who in the, you know? Who on earth is going to use a 30 tooth? I don't know what kind of hills you guys are climbing, but 29er, I'm always running a 30 tooth. If it's a, if it's 27.5, I'm always running a, a 32. I never run out of sprint at the top, and it just makes the climbs easier. It's as simple as that. Now going with a 30 tooth and a 52 on the back makes it, the climbing that little bit easier again. So. I'm into it. I, I, I wouldn't put a 32 on it. I definitely wouldn't put a 32 on it. I don't know why. I don't, I don't like to fatigue up climbs. And if you know anything about riding and climbing, you'll know spinning is the way to go. So you look at the Tour de France and all the road cyclists, spinners are winners. It's, it's a very, very common saying in the, in the roadie world, spinners are winners. If you want to climb sustainably, you want to be spinning. You don't want to be mashing a heavy gear and spending all your, uh, your explosive energy because you need that on the descents. You need that on the sprints and you need it on the descents. So you just spin, just use your aerobic energy, going up, I think it's perfect. 52 and a 30, no worries. I thought the 52 was gonna be a little bit big and a little bit dicky coming from the 52 down to the, I think it's a 42, the next one. I thought it was gonna be like a little bit stocky and starty, but once I got the gears tuned properly, it was good. Which brings me to the point of bike shop assembly, Definitely, nothing against the bike shop. I definitely appreciate it. Uh, and by the way, Bicycle Express, shout out for hooking me up with this thing. Uh, obviously, I paid full price, but uh, getting it in, making sure I could get it, perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, but assembly, uh, there's a few loose bolts. Not loose, loose, but loose enough that after two rides, they'd definitely be loose. Um, the rear caliper was a little bit loose. No big deal. The railer was loose. The derailleur hanger was bent, very, very bent. Now the way I found that was uh, trying to tune the gears because they were all out of whack when I first got the bike, when I first got on and started sprinting. Uh, I checked the, the tension on the derailleur, yep, no worries. But it was trying to jump up the cog at the top, but almost out of the cogs the other way, down the bottom. So retuned it, had a look, and then thought, nah, it's definitely bent. So I put my tool on it, and for sure it was super bent. So that's just a just a transit thing, I'm assuming. So maybe the derailleur might have a bit of damage there as well. Maybe not. But the hanger itself was bent like a banana. It was quite a fair way out, like it taken a decent hit. So I straightened that up, and instantly the gears were much more crisp. I, I tuned it again. I don't know why they didn't pick it up when they assembled it. It definitely is... It would stand out like a sore thumb. Once you're starting to tune, you, know, you assemble a bike, tune the gears, ready to roll. Uh, you know straight away. So, small gripe, but it doesn't matter. I fixed that. That's my responsibility anyway. As a bike, you know, as a as a buyer of a bike, regardless of who you're buying, I know they have a responsibility to make sure it's safe and assembled properly. But you have a responsibility to yourself and your own health 
to make sure that regardless of who's put your bike together, you do the final touches of making everything, making sure everything's tight and making sure everything's functional and safe. So I've done that, got everything right. Uh, 175 cranks, not a fan of, but no big deal. I'll try and get a hold of the 165 crank. The Bontrager rims come with this rim strip inside instead of tubeless tape. So I ripped this off the back because I've run a cush. I've got a cush core in there. I'm trying to protect these uh, Swiss cheese Bontrager aluminium wheels. They're definitely soft. They are super soft. Uh, I won't be surprised if I've got a couple of big dents by the end of the week. Uh, but no biggie, I'll get a different uh, rear wheel built up, probably leave the front. Uh, the hubs, the hubs are killer. The hubs are excellent. So anyway, the reason I pulled this out is for a little bit more space in the actual well of the rim. So with this, it kind of takes up probably you know a millimetre or two, probably two millimetres of space that you really need when you're installing a cush core and you... you you, and even if you just go on a downhill casing tyre, you, you, you want to make it a bit easier. The rim itself is pretty easy to get a tyre on, they're not overly tight fit, so that's cool. It feels good, it feels good. The Bontrager dropper post, it's good. Now, initial impressions from the ride yesterday is the rear end is very progressive, very, it gives you that, if it's, I run it a little over sprung. So I run it just on 30%, or ever so slightly deeper than 30%, and it still felt oversprung. It was choppy, fast, it was, it was definitely fast, uh, easy to hold speed on, easy to carry speed. It had that slash momentum, it had the same momentum as the old slash that I tested. But it was oversprung in the back, hence it was rough. I had the compression set up in the zero setup, which so it's got a, it's got a zero, a negative and a positive, so three different positions. So I've had it in the neutral or the zero. Uh, in the open position, the negative position, feels definitely real soft and supple. Uh, in the plus position, it's definitely firm and, and, and damped. So I'll play with that. We'll see how it goes. I love, I love this. This is excellent. Internal storage. That'll end up rattling, 100%. That'll get loose and rattle. Uh, with the weight of a drink bottle on it all the time, it's going to wear. So that's something to pay attention to in the future. And we got this little bag of goodies. There's no goodies in it, but it's a little bag for goodies. So you can either put a tube and a CO2 and stuff in there, or you can put your little tool, little multi-tool, or you can do a bit of both. So it comes with this little little descriptions, so, you know, where you, where you can store your stuff. So, CO2 cartridge, inflator, tyre levers, tube, put whatever you want in there, really. It's your life. Uh, love it. I love that. It seems quiet, doesn't seem like there's much cable ra rattle, except for this here. So, I've sticky taped it for now, just like a short term, but I'll, I'll put something on there to to hold that cable in place properly. But what was happening is over the bumps, it was ding, 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 like it was just bouncing on and off of the frame. So, not into that. I like it. Comes with an MRP, chain guide and bashy. So perfect, don't have to upgrade that. I was gonna get a, a one-up uh, bashy and guide there, but it's already got it. I didn't actually realize it had it, so I didn't look into the specs enough, I guess. It's dead. I love it. It's quiet. It's got a good chain stay protector, which everyone's talked about. You know, all the reviews you see, they're all talking about the finer details. I just love that I'm on a Lyric again. I've got the geometry that I want. I've got the length that I want in a bike. I've got 29er wheels. I've got the option to go a mullet. I think this is going to be killer. Definitely, I'm, I'm not sure about the Lyric yet. I'm not sure about the C1 Debonair Spring. So I went back and forth yesterday, mainly on the street, but then on the trail, kind of gave me a, a, a realistic idea of how it feels. One token is what it comes with standard. I went one token, I went no token, I went two tokens, went back to no token, I went back to one token, because no token is, I have to run it too high in the sag, so I have to run it uh, too shallow in the sag. It's like 13, yeah, probably 13% between 10 and 13 percent to get enough support to get enough pushing support and pumping support and, and, and pop support so one token I can have it at about 15 percent and it's 
more or less the right support, but it's still got this hole in the travel. It's got this exactly the same as what I felt in the, in the pipe. Comparing it to the old Debonair spring, the original Debonair spring, it feels like you gotta hold onto it. You gotta hang onto it a bit more. The old Debonair spring is so calm, so stable, so predictable, it's got nothing going on anywhere that's unruly, any part of the stroke, it's perfect if you set it up with the right token configuration. It's, it feels a little bit whack, it feels a little bit out. So I'm gonna spend a lot of time on it, there's gonna be a lot of back and forth with tokens, there's gonna be a little bit of back and forth with pressure, but we'll see if we can find a sweet spot. If I can't, it'll be out with the new and in with the old. I'll rip this C1 out and I'll put the the original, I think it's the B1 Debonair spring in there. And that'll be straight up to speed, feels killer. I know, I've, I've ridden a million of them, or I've ridden them heaps, and uh, they, they feel really good. So we'll see how that comes about, and it's just time now, it's just time. I was trying to get the Bontrager pedals, I like the Bontrager plastic pedals, didn't have them in stock in black, they had them in yellow, but uh, one of the black ones obviously. Uh, we'll just see how it goes. So I'll give it a send, and stay tuned because there's a lot of vids coming.